back to the channel. We are going through our June 5th uh, inspection. So we're starting out with the nuke, and I'm joined here by my daughter. Hi. And so what we'll do is we'll go through and take a look at first the nuke and the apame hive, and then we'll take a look at the package. So with this video, I just tried jumping ahead, not showing the full inspection. Uh, but you can see here, this is frame number two. It's one of the frames they built out. On one side, it's all brewed. The other side had a lot of drones. Up in the corners, you can see the white patches or the honey that the bees are doing. So there's lots of honey here and you can see, uh, yeah, just a whole, they decided they wanted to just build a whole bunch of drone cells. Even though this is a new frame, there was nothing on here back in April when we first installed it. So here's frame one. I'm not sure if we found, did we find the queen? No, I don't frame? think we found the queen. I'm not sure. Yeah, she was hiding pretty well. And we did another inspection later in the week at the end of, after the video stopped recording, I put a queen excluder between the bottom brood box and the top box, but I decided the bees just weren't going up into the upper box as much as I wanted them to. Plus, it does seem like the queen's kind of running out of space here. Do we talk about what honey bound means? Do you remember I was talking about honey bound? Oh, you don't know what it means? Well, <laughs> so honey bound's where there's so much honey and nectar that the queen doesn't have space to lay. So in all the cells, if they're all filled with nectar or honey, um, or they already have capped brood, she just needs enough space to lay. And when you look at the bottom box and the time that it takes for oh, bees to have... There's queen. Oh, there's queen. Oh, there she is. The sequence here is sort of on the left side. I should hold the frame up a little bit longer for people to see. So yeah, so the concern is, you know, will there be full of nectar and then the queen won't have enough space to lay? But it does look like there's lots of space you know, still in the bottom box, but a lot of it was also filling up with nectar. I've heard this season there's also a lot of swarms that are happening in our area. So even new packages and nukes are swarming. And that happens when there's a heavy nectar flow. And so right now there's a pretty big nectar flow where there's lots of flowers blooming near us. So now that I've seen the queen, I tend to go a little bit faster after we see the queen. Um, you know, you also can inspect to look for eggs, but if you see the queen, then you know the queen is in there. Uh, but we're checking for eggs, larva. It's still a little bit easier for me to see the larva because they're a little bit bigger. Yeah, that's all that capped brood. And then you can see the shiny parts on the frame. That's where nectar is also interspersed. Tavia, was this the day we were picking up the frames, or was that the last inspection we did? I think it was the last inspection. Yeah, just full of fruit, and at the corners we see honey, and then yeah, that, that full full frame of shiny press, and it looks like those are actually the larva, larva in there. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing lots of larva, and we're also seeing a lot of capped brood and some drone cells. And then the bees, for some reason, in this hive especially, they do climb up onto the side of the hive. They think that's a frame, just the way that it's designed. So this is one of the last original nuke frames that was in the box. And then these last two frames 9 and 10, these are all brand new built outs. They didn't have this before, but uh, again, you see they're building a whole bunch of drone, but then there's also full frames of brood. So one side has a lot more drone cells than you expect, there has brood. It's probably not worth trying to stop them from making the drones they want to make. Because if they make the drones when they have stuff that's brand new, they obviously are doing it for a reason, and we don't want to interrupt that reason if it's um, something that they really need. Yeah, and you can try. So here, now we're on the top box. So I did have a queen excluder between the two uh, for a week, and then they really didn't build anything, right? And I remember there was a bunch of bees up on the top, 
And so I took the Queen Excluder off, and then here you see they're starting to build all of these frames. And they're not fully built out, but in each one of the frames on each side, I saw they were building out the comb. So then after that, I put the Queen Excluder, but then I just, I got a little bit more concerned. I was worried, will the Queen have enough space below? Is she going to become honey bound? Because they were storing a lot of honey in the bottom. They're just, they haven't built up the comb in the top, so they don't have enough space. So I think what we did later is in the week we removed the Queen Excluder because we were worried about the Queen not having enough space in the bottom box. So um, we don't we don't have the Queen Excluder. Yeah, and usually for hives you'll have two what they call deep boxes. So they're the ones that are that are deeper. You'll have those for the brood chamber, so the Queen can lay in either one. Um, there's different schools of thought. Should you have one brood chamber or two brood chambers? You know, the we're not really worried as much about getting honey, you know, right away. Uh, we do want the bees to build out 20 frames to make sure that they have enough space and that they're ready to go into the winter. The benefit of having one brood box is you only really have to inspect one for disease, right? The top one becomes more honey, so you can look for bees in the top that might have disease, but really you're, you're focusing a lot more on a single box. And also to find the queen, you only have to look at 10 frames. If you don't have a queen excluder, then what will happen is the queen could just, you know, go up to the top, she'd be in the bottom, she could be on any one of 20 frames, and so it becomes a little bit harder to find her. Here, so. we're, here we're finishing off the, um, the top of the hive, and we're just closing it up. Okay. So I go over to uh, the package hive that we installed. There's a huge piece of burr comb. So this hole in the top, so this is what they call the inner cover. You see we have this little U-shaped notch in the front uh, and facing up. Uh, and so, yeah, they, they take that because it's extra space for them. It's violating what they call bee space. And so where they have space to build comb, they build comb. So they've been increasingly building larger and larger pieces of comb outside of that hole. And this is nice. I like the frame holder because you can take and put the frames on. The only problem is this doesn't fit on the Apame Hive and the stand it's on, it doesn't fit on that either. So I end up putting the frames on the ground. So I'm careful to inspect to make sure that the queen isn't on those frames. Uh, but I'd rather have some type of hanger where I can, on the Apame Hive as well, put the frames up in the air just so they're not on the ground. And sometimes you see the bees kind of pool on the ground afterwards. So the 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 frame hanger is uh, very useful because we don't want the bees to just walk away because there are some bees that have not really been out of the hive that much because they're nurses and it they need to find their way back to the hive but they haven't really been here so what they do is they try to look around and they just sense the air to find their hive but it's much harder for them than it is for the forager bees. Yeah, here you can see actually eggs were in there and then it has eggs, a whole bunch of capped brood, and then the white around the edges is where the honey is. And so they're making a little bit of honey, so this is a good pattern. You want to have honey on the outside corners, you want to have really the brood in the middle, and then having bee bread around is also good. So I think this is a picture perfect hive. So this is the one that was a package, so there was nothing in it, right? It was a queen in a little cage, a box full of 13,000 or so bees, and then we just had this box, the hive box, and we put these 10 frames in, and the frames had wax foundation, so already, it already sort of had the pattern of the honeycomb. Um, but yeah, look at all that pollen. Uh, you can see the shiny parts of the nectar, so this is a good you know, sort of resource, so they'll build this up, and the goal is to try to get them to have about 20 frames worth of supplies, honey, nectar, pollen, uh, a lot of honey to get them through the winter and make sure that the population is big enough to support the queen and make sure she's warm. Getting off to work on angling the frames as I take them out. I'm also trying to figure out where it was a good rainbow. Well, yeah, look at that. It's perfect sort of rainbow pattern, pollen in the middle, and then the brood on the outside. And then just the corners has a little bit of honey. Oh, so we tried the microphone, but it was not connecting. So this is a wireless mic. So unfortunately I was hoping to get more sounds from the Beehive because when you're using just this 360 camera, it's hard to hear because the camera's a little bit away and it doesn't really have a great microphone. So this external mic I thought would work well. It worked in a couple of recordings, but this time when we uploaded it, I just found it didn't record anything. So it was just some random beeping here and there.
Yeah, it's picture perfect. You can see there's a couple of drone cells. So the ones that look like popcorn in the upper left sort of corner. Usually one or two percent of the hive will be drone cells. So the other hive definitely has a lot more drone cells. You know, that could be a sign that the queen's older. And she's not able to fertilize as much eggs, but also the other hive, the bees just built a lot of drone size cells. And so also what the queen does is when she goes into a cell, she'll measure it with her legs. And if it's a small cell, then she'll fertilize the egg when she lays it. And so that becomes a worker bee. But if she measures it with her back legs and figures that it's a larger cell, that it's a drone size cell, then she'll lay an unfertilized egg. And that's what becomes a drone. There's a lot of burr comb on the edges of this frame. Yeah, this one I think we smoke and we just scrape it off to clean it up a little bit. And we're also saving the burr comb in a little jar. So we'll see at the end of the season how much we're saved. I don't think it'll be a lot. It might be worth like a little, little tea candle, you know, worth of burr comb. It's very light. And it's not in this video, but we also, when we got to the end, realized that all of the frames, except for frame 10, uh, pretty much were all built out and they're all filled. So they were definitely ready for a new box. And so after this video stops, I think I stack up the box and then we went and got 10 more frames and then put them inside. What are you doing there? Stacking the burp home? I had the idea that if the bees saw the burp home, then they would make it smell like them. <laughs> I don't know really why that mattered to me. I'm not sure, but I just did it. Here's the queen. She has a blue dot, so the dot's by the year, so it's a blue year. One around that frame. So again, it's always good. You don't have to see the queen each time. You're looking for signs that the queen was there recently. So, you know, small eggs are a good sign that she was there in the last day or two. Her larva, you know, it could be like three or five days or seven days later. So you start to see like there's just a ton of honey starting to get stored up in some of these frames. I see all of that white is just all capped honey. But again, this is the brood chambers. So this is where they have honey. They'll eat that. It'll be part of their winter store. We only have a couple more weeks and we really have to start making sure the bees are getting ready for the winter. So in July, they're, you know, pretty much all, all year long, you're just trying to figure out how do you make sure the bees are in a good enough shape to survive the winter. And what do you do if they're not ready? Uh, well, you do everything you can to make them ready, but they're outside animals, you know, so they're, they're insects, so you will store them outside. Although one of my coworkers said that someone, uh, I guess he put beehives in his downstairs bathroom in the tub over the winter. I don't know if I would do that. Yes, yeah, so that frame is being built out. And then this last one is, it's the only one that was empty. They're starting to build out uh, a little bit on the frame. Um, so again, it's, it's because we're only going in once a week. Uh, they're definitely running out of space and the population had just exploded. And there's a whole bunch of capped brood that's ready to explode. Since this was a package, they weren't laying any eggs, so when we put them in, we knew that the population would go down. But then once the eggs that the new queen laid hatched, then the population would be exploding, and this is what we expected, that there would be tons of bees, and we're so happy that it's growing. Yeah. I mean, it's smaller than the nuke because they, again, they started without any comb builds. So they didn't have cells for the queen to lay in. So it took them a little bit of time to build up, but yeah, they're doing a great job. And all the frames are picture perfect. The other one has older frames from, I think, 2011, according to the markings. So this one, all the frames are new, so it's all it's all fresh and even. The other one, you know, the frames, the cells are a little bit 
uh, warped. They're not they're not all sort of blackened and that old, but you can definitely tell the new frames versus the old frames. And then as a bee and a queen uses the frames, what happens is each time a new bee is hatched inside, it leaves like a little bit more uh, of the cocoon sort of in the, the walls of the cell. And so the cell gets progressively smaller, just a little bit over time. So you do want to cycle out your frames and, you know, not not every year, but, you know, five years, every five years when I cycle them out. Yeah, a lot of smoke. I'm not sure why I was, oh, I was smoking the, all the burkum was on there. They're all, all over the burkum. Yes, I am. So now they definitely don't smell like them because now I had to smoke them. <laughs> Yes, I was, I wasn't, I'm not sure what I was, what I was doing, I was just oh, yeah, that, thinking. Yeah, the theory. Yeah, and again, <laughs> and we'll figure out with this microphone what to do. Maybe we'll just do it without the microphone to get some more of the view sounds with just the camera. Yeah, it was funny because it worked before. It worked a couple of times, but now yeah, this time I just didn't record. We're putting the inner cover, inner cover back on. And it's, it's important. The notch always goes to the front and it's up. You know, so to get inside the frames, you have to sort of go on top of that surface and then go down into that hole. So yeah, so I'm putting it on. So right now I'm not going to put the sugar syrup in. I'm going to put the lid on. Um, and then we went down after the video and just grabbed 10 more frames, put it in here, and then we had two medium boxes. So they're not as deep as this, but the two medium ones we put on top and then you know, put the sugar syrup inside. So that's gonna do it for this episode. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you.